channel. Today we will be covering many things. Our first thing on the list is human cloning. Oh, a science person, what is human cloning? Well, a clone can be a couple things. It can be a clone from Star Wars, or it can be a replica of something, like what we're talking about today. What do you mean? Well, with semi-new technology, we can actually make a replica of an animal and eventually a human. How is this done? Well, first, we get, find a donor cell, then we extract the DNA from it and throw it out. Next, we add a nucleus from the desired animal that we want to clone. The last thing we do is implant the combined cell into the animal the do donor cell is acquired from. That doesn't sound that hard. <laughs> well, of course it doesn't sound hard, but it's taken hundreds of years to clone a simple sheep. <coughs> Anyways. Wait, I have a question. Yes? Are there different types of cloning, or do we just clone animals and humans? Well, in fact, there are three different types of cloning. There's DNA cloning, reproductive cloning, and therapeutic cloning. But what's the difference between all of them? Well, DNA cloning deals with the transfer of specific DNA fragments from one organism to a self-replicating genetic element. Reproductive cloning is used to generate an animal that is the same nuclear DNA as another currently or previously existing animal. And last but not least, therapeutic cloning is the production of human embryos for those uses in research. What type of cloning did you describe earlier? That was reproductive cloning. Well, what are the advantages of re reproductive cloning? Well, take her for example. You see, she only has one arm. So what we can do to fix this is to take off the arm from her clone and sew it on her. Oh, I see. Th that is useful. What else could you do with the clone? Well, say you got in a car crash and your heart was failing. What the doctors could do is transplant your bad heart with your, clone, with your clone's heart. And presto, you're good. That sounds awesome. Clones aren't all that good either. Well, how could having a clone that could potentially save your life on, on day be a bad thing? Well, see, there are a couple bad things about it. One thing you ne we need to remember is that clones also have a mind of their own. Just because they look exactly like you doesn't mean they're going to think or act the same way. Oh, well, it, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, we, we won't love the same ice cream or the same movie to see, but you still have a clone. Well, what if this clone decides to become a mass murderer? They just go around killing people. Or what if they become thieves? and steal ferrets from people's houses. Well, then they would eventually get caught in the jail, right? Yes, th that is very true. But since they're a clone, they have someone else with the same exact fingerprints and DNA as them. Oh, that would be a very bad thing. If, it, if I had a clone and she did all that bad stuff, she would blame it on me and nobody would. Blame. I don't want to be known as a ferret napper. <laughs> See, that's why we need to think about things like this. But that's with human clones. What would be some cool things we do just with just plain animal cloning, like cats and dogs? Very good question. What good things can we use cloning for with animals? Oh, I know. Say someone's favorite cat died. Before you bury it, you can take its DNA and make a new kitten that looks exactly like it. The personality might not be exactly the same, but at least you have your cow back. <laughs> That's an excellent idea. I would hate to lose my favorite pet. Um, what's that sound? <laughs> Nothing. I suggest we run now. Zombies have escaped!